Stephanie Kelly. And I'm Amy McKenzie. Welcome back to another edition of the Stew Basement Tapes. This week's show is on science, technology, and the environment. We're here at the Hugh John Fleming Forestry Center, where for over 60 years, students have studied in various fields, from forest harvesting to computer application. At the top of our show, we have four news stories on the environment. Radon, a danger in homes. Bisphenol A, a toxic plastic. And a Canadian striving for biodiversity overseas. This past summer, Canada adopted new safety guidelines for radon. Radon is an invisible gas that can become very dangerous when trapped in buildings. As Viola Pruss tells us, the government is training experts to help when levels get too high. This rock more than likely contains some uranium. That's because New Brunswick soil is rich in uranium. The problem is, it naturally breaks down and releases a gas called radon. The gas tends to get trapped in buildings, especially our homes. Basement apartments like this are at a higher risk because they are in close contact with the soil. The gas seeps in through cracks in the walls and places where pipes and cables come in. Health Canada says one in five homes in western New Brunswick has dangerously high levels. And in Canada they estimate 2,000 deaths in 2009 from radon-induced lung cancer as opposed to 250 from secondhand smoke. So it really brings home the fact that it is, it is a significant problem. Victor Nowitzki is a Fredericton hydrogeologist. He is the only person in the province who is certified to repair homes and public buildings with radon problems. If, for instance, your, the levels are low, the limit is 200, so let's say you're at 250, then, and you have a dirt basement, an earth floor basement, well, putting a liner of plastic on top of that ceiling to the walls may take care of that problem. Mm. But if you're 400 or 500 equicuries, it probably won't take care of the problem. Nowitzki recommends homeowners to seal the cracks in their basement walls. He also recommends to get a radon detector, and if high levels show, to get professional help. For Stu Journalism, I'm Viola Puss. A couple of weeks ago, Canada became the first country to declare bisphenol A toxic. It's a common type of plastic found in many popular products. And as Carissa Donkin reports, it has some consumers changing their ways. When Olivia Long isn't working at the J.B. O'Keefe Gym in Fredericton, you can usually find her running cross country. Long should drink eight glasses of water a day to be ready to run. This is what she used to put her water in. but not anymore. So I changed it up because I just found the water tasted better, but also it's important not to take those kinds of risks with your health. Like when you're young, you think, you know, oh, nothing will happen to me. Like it'll be fine. But a lot of the time you do start feeling the effects. Long isn't the only one who ditched her plastic bottle. Mountain Equipment Company stopped selling the hard plastic bottles in 2007. Bisphenol A or BPA is the source of these worries. BPA is a chemical used to make polycarbonate plastic, the material that these water bottles are made of. BPA has been linked to a number of health issues, including obesity, behavioral problems, and early puberty. And BPA isn't just found in water bottles. In fact, you can probably find sources of BPA in your very own kitchen. You can find it in drink and food cans. It's even in receipts. David Kuhn creates policies for the Conservation Council of New Brunswick, a nonprofit environmental protection agency. Well, it's an important step, but the, but the next question is, what kind of regulatory action are they going to take? Kuhn suggests that concerned consumers send a letter to their local MP. While Canada decides what to do with BPA, runners like Olivia are hoping that their water bottle switch will get them on the road to better health. For Stu Journalism, I'm Carissa Donkin. Three Fredericton High School students have returned from a trip to Japan. They were chosen to represent young people at an international conference on biodiversity. Haley Ryan explains. Emily Malone, Christina Wiedinghoff, and Clara Simpson spent a week in Nagoya, Japan. They helped draft what is being called the Youth Accord. It's a collective statement from young people representing 12 countries concerned with the state of our ecosystems. It was presented at the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. The most important thing would be agriculturally. Um, and medicinally, there's a lot of uh, people in developing countries that are extremely dependent on that for um, their, their livelihood, but also just to survive. 
biodiversity refers to the variety of animals and plants on Earth. It's an issue right here at home. Part of the woodlot owned by the University of New Brunswick is being cleared for projects such as the new Costco. Plans are infringing upon its wetlands, which are home to many species of animal and plants, some endangered. The accord presented in Japan demand that a deadline be set to stop the preventable loss of biodiversity around the world and to keep the opinions of young people in mind. While these young Canadian women are doing their bit, Canada as a country got some negative recognition. It received a Dodo Award for blocking negotiations and for being difficult when discussing 2020 biodiversity targets. For Stu Journalism, I'm Haley Ryan. Welcome back. The city of Fredericton picks up recyclable plastic from homeowners, but it's not so easy for business owners. As Maria Ackley reports, one local business owner is fed up. Clothing stores such as Robert Simmons get their merchandise in plastic packaging like this. Every week, more than 10 pounds of plastic pile up with no easy way to recycle it. Because the city doesn't pick up these recyclables from businesses, Paul Simmons and his wife and co-worker Linda have to take the plastic themselves to the exhibition grounds. There is no designated uh, recycling unit downtown. They didn't have the budget to put recycling containers on the uh, various blocks downtown, which I personally think is a mistake. Since there are no close-by recycling facilities downtown, several of these stores have been paying private companies to take away their plastic. Some of them haven't been recycling at all. I think, personally, that we should be a leader, not a follower, and that we should be proactive in recycling and promoting recycling throughout the downtown core. Eric McGarity, the chair of the city's environmental committee, says he is unaware of any concerns as store owners haven't contacted the city. You've got to have people participate. We can set up the best Cadillac program in the world, but if people don't participate in it, it's, it's all for naught. The city has no plan to help these business owners, yet some cities such as Halifax and Charlottetown have found a solution. Business owners are encouraged to recycle their plastic and have the option of leaving it in nearby recycling containers. For Sioux Journalism, I'm Maria Atle. It has recently been reported that some Facebook applications have been revealing private information. This has led some people to wonder what exactly businesses are doing with that information. Shane McGee has the story on a company here in Fredericton that helps businesses monitor what is being written about them online. Corey Hartland works nine hours a day, so users of the software designed by Radiant 6 get the information they want. The Fredericton company started four years ago and has over 100 employees. The company has created a program called the Dashboard, which allows businesses to monitor what is being written about them in real time. The Dashboard can track posts from social media sites, YouTube, blogs, and more, searching for mentions of their companies. If I have my profile set to public and I update my status to mention Canadian Tire, Canadian Tire can use the dashboard to know what I am writing. Canadian Tire can use this to see how customers are reacting to their products and services. Nearly 44% of Fortune 500 companies use the dashboard. These are the top 500 companies in the United States. So for an organization like uh, Pepsi is looking to find out what's going on around to say their, their new launch of Pepsi Max, you can actually put Pepsi Max in as a search term, search for all of those mentions, and then to be able to see where they're coming from, what's being said, and obviously trend them out through the time as well, to be able to just slice and dice that data to report back to their internal teams. We tried to get a comment from the online education and privacy awareness group, Media Awareness Network, about what people can do to protect their privacy online. But we received no reply. Hartland says privacy shouldn't be a concern for most people. The privacy settings are there for a reason, to give the, the user, the end user, the, the decision whether they want to share the information with just their friends or with the community as a whole. Um, companies, I wouldn't say, are maliciously using this information. It's generally good information for them. For Stu Journalism, I'm Shane McGee.